All right guys, so today we're talking about E46 reliability. Now, we've done this video years ago, but there still is a desire for people to know what to look for in buying one of these cars. We're gonna go over all the terminal problems that are not fixable if it has it, and a lot of the maintenance problems that are. All right guys, so we're in front of our new E46. Now, the thing about this is, these are now, at this very minute in time, the cheapest BMWs to buy, right? So these are getting bought the most, obviously. Um, I would say we're gonna start with the paint first. These cars, if they're taken care of, this one's all scratched up, but we have a remedy for that. If they're taken care of, usually they're not too big of a problem. Now on the blues, on the dark blue and on the black, you can see on the top here, that the clear coat's getting broken down. Now we didn't buff this, we didn't do anything to it at all but you're gonna see some of this if they were not spray wax, wax right, if they were not ceramic coated, uh, left out in the sun, as you would of anything else. The door handles on these cars don't have too much problem breaking, but we do see them broken. Uh, a little discoloration on the aluminum trim, usually that'll clean up pretty good. And if they're somewhat well taken care of, they don't have a whole lot of issue um, with stuff peeling off. This one has a little bit of rot on the windshield trim, well, if I'll get around here and show you that, I'll get out of his way. And things like that, all these cars, this lower windshield cowling rots out. This one's been replaced, you could tell. Um, so yeah, there is that. All the emblems on every BMW always flake off. This has been replaced, so it does not have this issue. If you have the factory headlights, this car does not, it says eBay headlights. Uh, the factory headlights get all cloudy. Looks like you got cataracts in your car and you can't see where you're going. You do have a little bit of trim discoloration. That's always easy to fix, things like that. You can see this tire has worn, this car has worn tires. And as we showed in the last video of when we got this thing, it does need control arms. So if you're gonna buy one of these, it's around 100K, 100,000 miles, it's time to carefully inspect all the control arms and everything else, and then Front and rear both really on these. The struts, if you see any leaking on the struts, it's another good time to inspect all that and take care of all that. Um, I would say, usually, like I said, these door trims usually hold up pretty good. Now I do see a problem on this one. The trims on this side are black and the other side they are aluminum and this one's coming off a little bit. Luckily have, our other car has all black trims on it. We'll definitely, um, grab some stuff off of that car, make this one perfect. Uh, other than that, these cars do not share all of the brake failure issues that E60 had. E60, the five series this, this uh, generation, well, actually E90. So E60 would be one newer, uh, E39 would be the five series this gen. They had a lot of brake problems and there were unfixable brake issues and just a very heavy car. The brakes weren't big enough. This does not suffer from that. However, this is a lot smaller car, so you do have that. A lot of people don't like a smaller car. Some people do like a smaller car. Um, if you're into a smaller car, E46 is for you. If you don't wanna spend much money, if you want a bigger car, E39 is what you want. That's in the same price range as this. Anywhere from, I would say, zero up to $5,000 price range. That's what these cars are in and so forth. Um, I would say the, the biggest terminal failure of these is the rear subframe cracking. Now, before I bought this car, the first thing I did was get down the guy's driveway, slide under it, and I actually got some pictures of it, uh, and reached my hand up and I took pictures of the subframe that says no cracks anywhere in it. Uh, in 02, they, they made revisions to these and they fixed a lot of it, but they still did it, especially if they were a manual and you lived on a rough road, it would start busting out the, the chassis of the car. Um, really, an M3 is even worse because it's more power. So if it's a manual M3, there's even a bigger chance of ripping it out. And then they revised this again, what, an 04, I believe, and fixed it even more. Still though, you can't trust that. You still have to look no matter what. And you can't do that just by getting on the ground, reaching under the car, taking your phone, taking pictures of stuff. Always, always, always do that. Uh, 
transmission wise, if these were all wheel drive, these had the GM transmission. If they were rear wheel drive, they had the ZF 5H P19. ZF 5, ZF 5H P19 is actually a very, very, very good transmission. They did suffer with some torque converter seal problems with make shift kind of up and down. These cars, even the GM box, like in this one, if it shifts weird, there's a 95% chance that new, correct new fluid and filter will fix the problem. When I say correct, you guys seen us do this job a hundred times in this channel. I do not mean the ZF Amber fluid. I do mean uh, the Valvoline Max Life multi vehicle. That thicker red fluid does better in a higher mileage vehicle. Some people disagree, but we've done a ton of them here and that always fixes the issue having a little thicker fluid, especially as the valve body gets worn and the transmission and seals get worn, that'll actually swell stuff back up and fix a lot of that. Now, these cars do not have the seat twist problem like a lot of the 5 Series this year's did in E39. And this is not real leather seats, so it holds up really good. This has manual seats, which is my favorite. It's less hassle. And if you gotta pull the seats out, which we will, they're not near as heavy. Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of these cars did have on the door panels some issues here with that coming off the airbag. Luckily, we become Alcantara Masters. I say that kind of laughingly, but we could do that. As well as the headliner in this car is starting to come down a little bit. So we're going to block Alcantara the headliner and maybe these or do something different with the inserts on these. It's only the inserts on these, not the whole door panel, and it's very easy to fix. Um, these do not have any instrument cluster problems or radio uh, LED breakup issues. And that is really handy on these cars. So you're not having all kinds of struggles with having to send stuff off and get the circuit board reworked in it like you do with some cars. Um, like I said, the back seats in this thing, we have not touched this thing. So if it's dirty, you have to pardon us. There's not a lot of room. So if you have kids, uh, you're probably still good. If your kids are six foot four or taller, you're probably not still good for the back seat, but I'm six four in the front seat. We have zero problem fitting at all. These are bigger on the inside than the E46, but not as big as the E90 to give you a, a judgment of what's going on here. Window regulators and all that stuff are cheap for these. Probably the easiest, well, one of the easiest window regulators to replace are about 25, 29 bucks. And if installed correctly, they're gonna last a long time. Even the Chinese one will last a long time. Um, it's definitely not worth spending a hundred and some dollars to go to the dealer and get window regulators and put them in yourself. Just no need for that. If you get five or seven or eight years out of a $25 one, I mean, more power to you. The factory one's probably not gonna last any longer than that. Um, and then we're moving on to the engine. So all these cars have either M52 TU, if it was pre 2001, 2001 and 2005 is, well, I think convertible in 2006, I can't remember. 2005, 2006 went to M54 engine, which is what this is. Now, M54 engine is a very good engine. However, it's a, a coolant leaking engine, period, and oil leaking, but it's fixable, all right? So what's happened to this engine, it's been overheated, right? It's had a coolant leak, it did not get caught in time, it got driven too far and it overheated. So what happens with these, the head bolts that bolts the cylinder head to the engine block, the cylinder block's aluminum, the cylinder head's aluminum, and what'll happen is uh, when it gets hot, it'll try to separate those two and it'll strip out the threads of the head bolts. This one hasn't stripped on cylinder number three and good way to tell that it's pressurizing the radiator hoses immediately. Or if you're just overheating, it just won't stop. It's acting weird, it's losing coolant. That's usually a telltale sign of that. There's no physical way to see that's what's going on. And they just take the whole valve cover off and just put the torque wrench on them and see if they're loose. Other than that, the valve covers themselves are plastic like any other German car or any other car these days, regardless of the brand, they will crack. This one is cracked, you can see it's leaking and it will need to be replaced uh, for sure. And I thought Phil's trying to hand me the camera. Um, so there is that. And then here we have the PCV line. You see tape on it. 
these are common. This car is 160K on it. So this will need the whole PVC system. Now, the previous owner has already done a new fan clutch, but we'll take that off and throw that in the trash. That makes no, has no relevance in this car whatsoever. Um, it has a brand new water pump. He's done upper and lower radiator hoses. And most importantly, he's done the hard pipes under the intake manifold, the hard coolant lines. He's also rebuilt the DISA. He's also put a brand new throttle body boot on it and a new uh, radiator tank. So all that's been done. So when we need to go do this car, we'll pull the engine. We don't have to do a lot of that stuff to it, which is gonna save a lot of money. So all we're gonna have to do to this, and if you're gonna buy one of these to drive, I'd recommend you do the same. If you really wanna fix one of these, you probably need to engine out this thing. Just kind of do everything in one go. We call it the $600 fix. It's about 600 bucks for a, a valve cover, a PCV, all the coolant related stuff, uh, oil pan gasket, rear main, front main, um, the oil filter housing gasket, throttle body boots, all that stuff's about 600 bucks for good legit parts. If you do that to one of these cars, You'll never have a problem with it for a very long time, for another 100,000 miles, essentially. Uh, if you don't do that, you're gonna be struggling with it every minute, every day, right? So there is that. Overall, really good cars. These are a bargain right now. Uh, just make sure it's not hiding a bad engine. Engines are not expensive for these at the minute. They went up a little bit. One for all-wheel drives, about 700 bucks. One for two-wheel drives, eight to 900 bucks. So keep that in mind. If you can snag one of these for cheap enough, maybe it makes sense for you to do the swap in it, to do the engine swap. And what we might do with this one, this is 325XI. We could easily put the 330XI engine in this. It's all the same, just the intake's different and the mass airflow and the throttle body. Um, whether it's worth doing there or not, we'll see what the price of the engines are for a 330. We very well could do it. Overall, these are the bargain basement prices on these E46s right now. These will go the way of the E36 and the price to go through the roof as the way the E30 did years ago. What, seven, eight years ago, E30 went through the roof, then it was E36. This car will be next. So I would say the best examples of these, obviously is E46 M3. Other than that would be like a, a 330CI, we top of the line. But there again, if you guys are all wheel drive guys and you live where it's snow, the XI cars are the way to go. And stay tuned for more videos on this car. We'll do engine out. We'll show you guys step-by-step step how to do every single thing on it. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.